Assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you. I'm Yusuf Estes, and it's time for us to take a break. Take a break from our everyday mundane life and really look and think, study, consider, contemplate, reflect on what it's all about. And today in particular on Take a Break, I wanted to talk about an ayah, a verse from the Quran. You'll find this in Surah Al-Anbiya, chapter 21, verse 107. What it says here, I'll be in the Shaitan regime, Wama ar salnaka illa rahmatan lil alameen. And this is often translated as Allah has not sent you, Muhammad, except as a mercy for all of the creation or all of the worlds. I wanted to talk about that because actually this is something that's very often in discussion these days because we talk about Muhammad, وسلم, peace be upon him. We talk about him because so many things have come up. We find people drawing cartoons, making fun of him, saying things, evil things about him. And yet here we find in the Quran an amazing statement. The creator and sustainer of the entire universe is telling us that he has sent Muhammad as what? He said nothing less than the mercy for the worlds. That's what it says. Rahmat al alamin. Yet look at what the people say and what they're doing. What are some of the proofs about Muhammad? I want to think about that for a minute. What have people said about him? Let's ask. What have the non-Muslim famous scholars, poets, and chroniclers said about Muhammad? throughout history. And then let us consider what have some of those people who knew him, what did they say? Even his enemies at his time, what did they say about him? And then what about his companions? What did they say? His wife, what did she say? And then what did he say? Why did Allah say that he sent him as the Rahmah to the Alameen. Makes you think, doesn't it? One of the things I want to share with you something is from George Bernard Shaw. When he talks about Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the best way. He discusses Muhammad as though it was his best friend and talks about him in the best way and says that this is really someone who today could make a big difference in the way we lead our lives. Could solve a lot of problems. And Gandhi, you've heard of Gandhi, right? And look what he said. Would you like to know that he said that if he were alive today, he could solve all the problems of the world? And then when we look to some of the other famous people throughout history, the comments that they've made about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, this is amazing when we contrast it to some of the things that are being said today. There's an old expression that says, consider the source. Consider the source. Who said it? Now here we have Allah saying that he sent Muhammad as a mercy to the mankind and all that exists, to the worlds. We have the saying of Muhammad himself that he came to do what? He didn't say that he came to conquer the world, to take over the economic situation but rather to do what? To change only one thing, the hearts. To change the hearts. The people who were the enemies to Muhammad, peace be upon him, when they spoke about him, they really didn't like the message that he brought because it would mean they had to give up false worship of their gods. The same that we find today. People who worship money, people who worship this material existence, this called Hayat dunya in Arabic. They worship that. But when you stop and think, even the enemies of Muhammad at his time, they were truthful. 
They were truthful to this extent that they would not say things that they knew were a lie against him. For instance, one time when some of the enemies to Islam, they were called mushrikeen, idolaters, statue worshippers. They were trading and doing business in another land, in the Byzantine Empire actually. And there was a message that was sent out by Muhammad, peace be upon him. And when the emperor found this message, it was in Arabic, and he doesn't know Arabic, he said, find some of the Arabic traders and bring them to me, and let's get them to tell us what the message says. And they asked one of them to sit up front, and then the others behind, with the instruction that if he lies, that they should let him know. And then the, he asked about Muhammad. He wants to know who is Muhammad, peace be upon him. And did he ever claim to be, you know, like he's a king, he wants to be the king? No. And did he ever say this or that? Or No, no, no. He didn't do that. He didn't. In fact, the one who did this, he said, you know, I tried to think of something bad to say, and the only thing I could say is, well, we have a truce with him right now, but we're not sure he's going to honor the truce. And that was the only bad thing he could say, and that wasn't really that bad, was it? Because even the enemies in those days used to have some kind of, well, morals to the extent that they would tell the truth. Today, I don't know where some people are coming from with the things they say, but a lot of the things that we hear being said about Muhammad are not only lies, they're preposterous lies. Things that it, uh, just the slightest little bit of time that you would spend, a little bit of time, to investigate, to search and research, you'll find that these things are preposterous. Let me give you an example of one. There is one today who claims that Muslims have been taught by Muhammad to worship the moon. No, Muslims will say, what? Are you crazy? Oh, this is clear in the Quran. Allah tells us about worship is only for him. And in fact, the moon, the sun, and all the other things are a part of the creation of Allah. <laughs> and nobody can worship them. And Allah said this in the Quran. Even when they ask a question to Muhammad about the new moons, they want to know about the moons. There used to be superstitions about that. People did used to worship the moon and things about it. And it's in chapter 2 of the Quran, Surah Baqarah. And the verse is 189. It says, Yas Alunaka. It means they're asking you about what? The Hilal. The new moon. And Allah tells him about the new moon right here. And he says, it is only so you can judge the beginning of the months to make your pilgrimage or your hajj. Now, how could somebody read this and then come up with such a preposterous story and then propagate it and spread it around the earth and ha actually have some Muslims saying, hey, do we worship the moon? <laughs> of course, this is ignorance. Some have even said that there was a moon god inside, inside of the Kaaba in Mecca. Another preposterous lie, because we have pictures of the inside of the Kaaba. There's nothing in there. Some people will stop at nothing these days to try to sell books or be number one in telling a story, going on the news, being on these talk shows. But in fact, what we want to know is is Muhammad really the Rahmatullah Alameen? And that's why we're taking this break right now, because we want to find out. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to stop for a minute. I'm going to be right back with you. And we're going to continue on Take a Break, talking about Muhammad the Rahmatullah Alameen. Be proactive. Dr. Haitham Al Haddad teaches us how to take a conscious control over our life, set our goals, and work to achieve them in Islam. Take firm steps towards your future, be positive, and be proactive. Every single Muslim needs to have in order to be an effective person. So proactivity uh, in Islam, how to serve our religion and how to serve uh, our life and our guides through all of this. The proactive person is always motivated. The proactive person always have high ambition. The proactive person 
he will not lose his time. He will not waste his time. The proactive person is a generous person. We're back. You're watching Take a Break. And we are doing that. We're taking a break out of today just for a few minutes to reflect on something really important. We've been talking about Prophet Muhammad, who is the mercy, the mercy to the world. What we talked about a little bit was those who don't believe in Muhammad and what they said, and they still told the truth and said to you that he has what? He has good character. For instance, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, never told a lie. Throughout his whole life, he never lied. Another point is that even though people at his time were, it was common to drink alcohol, wine, he never drank it. Not once. It was also common for them to have, like, girlfriends and do what they want to do with them. He never did that. In fact, he never had a girlfriend until he was 25 years old, and then he didn't have a girlfriend, he got married. Imagine this. He remained totally and completely pure, and then he got married at age, what, 25. And throughout his whole life, he only married women, never, ever anything else. And an important thing about this, too, is that he never, ever hit them. He never abused them. He didn't even talk down to them or condescend to them. And he was the example for all of the people, if all of the people would just take a minute and look at the way he treated women, for instance, the kindness, the generosity, and the humbleness, the sweetness. Here is someone who, even in the days when Islam was ruling so many people so far and wide, yet he still slept on the floor, on a mat. He still washed his own clothes, cooked his own food, and here is somebody who could have just given the order. Many people would have to do what he said, but he didn't do that. His character was something amazing. And those who knew him, even if they didn't like the message, worship one God, even if they didn't want to obey God, they still had to admit, here was somebody you could trust. So much so that from the time he was born, early on, there was amazing things about him and his integrity. The people called him the one who is truthful, the spirit of truth. That's how he was known, a sadiq. He was also known for his trustworthiness. Even when there were going to be battles between two different opponents, maybe one tribe against another tribe, any valuables that they had, they used to place with him because they knew when the battle was over, even if his tribe happened to be one of the ones that battled with him, he would still give the property back to the rightful owners when their battle was finished. Now, can you imagine this? Another point, when people spoke about him and they told his character, they would like to mention the fact that he joined together the ties of the raham, and this is the womb or the, the, the place where children are born from, meaning the blood relations. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was famous for that, to help people get resolution in their differences, to, to get back together, to bring the families together, and to make a better society. All of this from somebody who so many people today are quick to throw away, throw away something beautiful because they didn't take time to read, they didn't take time to study, they didn't take time to look at it at all. I want to share with you something. I want to share with you something. I want you to think about this. The people who have really read about Muhammad, peace be upon him, and really studied about this, even if they didn't choose to believe as he believed, didn't choose to be Muslim, but yet they had to admit he was an amazing man. What we did, we put a website together for you to go and reference this for yourself. Take time. Take time. The next time you want to take a little break, go to the website. It's called Prophet of Islam. Dot com. Prophet of Islam dot com. 
And while you're on the website, you'll be able to see what these people actually said for yourself. Also, and there's another point too. What about the people who did follow him? What about the people who did believe in him? And what did they say about him? Okay. Check this out. The people who followed him, they said, for instance, I'll give you one example. Anas ibn Malik. He was serving Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, for like 10 or 12 years, a long time. And during that whole time, he said, Prophet Muhammad, never blame me for anything. Never blamed him for anything. Can you imagine this? And his wife, Aisha, what did she say? She said about him that he never, ever abused his wives, ever, ever. And she said, if you would like to see an example of the Quran walking, look to Muhammad, peace be upon him. Because if you would see the way of Muhammad, you would see the character of Muhammad, you would understand the message that's coming in the Quran. The way that you and I as human beings can benefit most is to do what? Accept. Accept that he is that mercy that Allah has said. Let me read it to you again. I want you to think about that. Allah says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا And he say, this means sent you. إِلَّا رَحْمَةَ Alameen. That he has only sent Muhammad as a mercy for the world. When we think about this, we realize that it's important for us to accept that. Because if you just accept that Muhammad is that, he is the person who he claimed to be. He is the one that Allah said about this mercy. It means you will follow him, his character, his way, and begin to practice this. To exhibit this kindness, this generosity, this humbleness, this servitude. Because not only did Prophet Muhammad serve Allah, he served the people. And he told us many beautiful teachings. For instance, whoever doesn't thank the people... He doesn't thank Allah. So it's important for us to give thanks. Always give thanks to the people and then give thanks to Allah as well. Another thing he said that he's not a believer who can fill his stomach and go to bed at night, but his neighbor's stomach remains empty. Not a believer. Another beautiful teaching, he said what? Anyone who is a believer then a, a clear demonstration of it is that his neighbors are safe from two things, his hand and his tongue. If somebody's a believer, then his neighbor is safe from his hand and from his tongue. It means you won't hurt that person, you won't take anything away from him, and you won't say anything or do anything with your tongue against the person either. These are signs of the believer, two very important signs. I know that before I became Muslim, that when people talk to me about Muhammad, I would say, why are you guys always saying, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which means peace be upon him. And I know also that a lot of people today might say, well, how come you guys worship Muhammad? Well, we don't worship him. We love him very much, but we worship the God that he worshipped. We know that he was worshipping the same God of Abraham and Moses and David, and Solomon, and Jesus. And we also want to worship the same God. It's important to us to give credit to Muhammad, follow Muhammad, but to worship the God of Muhammad. All of these things and more, you can find it on that website I told you about. I know you probably want me to tell you again. So I'm going to tell you the website one more time. The website is called prophetofislam.com. Go check it out while you take a break and think. Think hard. Who is this Muhammad? And how can he affect my life? And how can I understand him to be the mercy to the world? Until next time, this is Yusuf Estes telling you, take a break and visit us back here on Take a Break. Assalamu alaikum wa Ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-